on today's episode of That Mental Ginger Show, we welcome back the fittest fat kid you know, Bruce Naxon. At the time of this recording, Bruce Naxon's first video is still the highest viewed video on my channel to date with 8,300 views. I wonder if his follow-up will get as much traction. Well, he has been on quite a journey since we last spoke, so let's cut to the intro. All right, trip. <laughs> It's an absolute pleasure to see you again, my friend. How are you getting on? I'm doing all, quite all right. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. And I want to start off with some good news for you. Your first interview is still the highest viewed episode on my channel to date at the time of this recording. <laughs> with over 8,300 views. 300 and what? 300 and what? Come on. Details, well, uh, details. Oh, details. Well, it's it's set. In fact, it said eight point three k. I was still. I was like, I'll remember that, but I'll just go into the analytics just now and I'll get the exact one for you. But mm -hmm. well, enlighten me. What what's been going on with you while I go and get the exact numbers for you? Well, the past couple of months has been like a roller coaster in health, mm -hmm. and it's now kind of on the uptick. Though I injured my foot yesterday, so exercising will be paused for the next week. All right. Which kills the heart for me. Mm. Um, I've just one. Uh, my two podcasts are still up and available to listen to. Mm. I'm on a bit of a hiatus trying to figure out what I want to do with them. I feel like I'm a little off on my format, so right. I got to figure some stuff out. I've yeah. resumed trying to get my acting career moving forward. Got myself oh, an good. agent. Got a couple auditions. Did a couple small projects kind of figuring that out the one thing that has happened is i figured out fully how to define myself which is a hard thing to do and mm. most people when they're like andrew what are casting wise what are you you might be like what am i mm. but i know I what got, i am now yeah i oh, actually go got ahead. that answered for me for, by my agent because i've got one since we last spoke well so i'm not an actor or a singer i am a personality oh I think it's good to have one of those. Yeah, I think it's just one of those things where they were like, we can't pinpoint one specific because he does a lot of things. Let's just say he's a personality and then we can put him for anything. But uh, you'll be happy to know 8,394 views. You're six away from 8,400. So I think after this, we'll drop the link in and go, let's get them these extra six views. Let's get them over that mark. And where are you, six people? Don't let me down. Yep. Don't there's let me down. There's, there's over 9,000 subscribers on the channel now. We can get six views out of this. Come on. Let's do it. Let's do this for Bruce. What? One of the, do one it of the, what? He's still, do it for me. Every time I've done like an updated intro, you've been in it. You're still in it. What? When I do another update for 2023, you will still be in it. I might even use this new footage. We don't know. So we have to keep, we have to keep you around. What? Was, it's been God, that makes my day. Mm. But to let you know, who, like when we're talking about the acting thing, who I am, if you take John Belushi, you cross him mm. with John Candy, that's me. Hey, the two Johns. The two Definitely. Johns. Both gone. So, I like to yeah. think that I am in some degree carrying on the banner. Mm. What about adding in a bit of Chris Farley into the mix as well, since he's another one that was taken too soon? True, he was. And I do sometimes get that I'm not quite that boisterous. I say mm. as I'm moving around far too much. Not at all, my friend. Not at all. What I've had plenty of guests where they have literally looked like I've had to ask them, I'm like, Do you have Parkinson's? And they're like, No. Oh, they're like, No, we've got ADHD. And I'm like, Ah. So so if a squirrel went past, that would be you? Pretty much. What? Mm. Okay. Exactly. The dog from up squirrel. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's like exactly like when we left off the last time. I was just having this good banter, and you'll be pleased to know, Star Wars. It's there. It's representing. I see. I see it. I see it. I see it. Have you been watching Andor? 
Well, I'm wait. I've waited for the whole thing to finish, and then I'm going to watch it like right through. Well, I've not had a chance to watch it because creating content and looking after two sick kids at the time of this recording. Well, uh, the nursery had reported there was a batch of scarlet fever going around, and we were absolutely oh. breaking it when they came home not well. We're like, oh no! Luckily, it's just a cold. Well, it's just a very severe dose of it. So poor Connor's having like the you know the fever babble that you get. And it's even yeah. more ridiculous when it's a four-year-old. It's fantastic. Some of the stuff they come out of, like, he's like, Daddy, who built me? I'm like, that's another story for another day. Anyway. <laughs> Let's see. Call it, like, get this again in five years, maybe maybe 11. Yeah. Then we'll talk. Yeah. And I've sadly, because it's boys, I'm, I'm left to do the talk. Well, Alison has already uh, got the ask your father down. Right, right. Now, it's do you need to talk father. before you have the talk with them? <laughs> yeah, I need. Well, I never even had the talk. Well, with my dad, well, I just came home one of the days after we had the um, sex ed class, and uh, I think when I was fourteen, and just said, "We've ran through sex ed. I don't have any questions. You're off the hook." And off I went. My mom, who was very much not about having me not know things, got mm. a children's book that was made with these paper cutouts uh -oh. when I was two or three. Mm -hmm. And it explained by talking about a chicken, a dog, and then people, how reproduction happens with wow. paper cutouts. Now they didn't show anything pornographic and for the people, they actually had like two people kissing totally covered in badges that was like their necks <laughs> and paper cutouts. Uh, Cause you could infer so I always knew, always knew where kids came from, specifically when it came to dogs and chickens, and I could infer from people. But so, and of course I was the kid who at two years old also knew that there couldn't possibly be Santa because he can't be on every street corner. I was one of those annoying kids. So um, I never had to have the talk, but then the how do I approach, how do I talk to girls talk? There was nobody there to give me that. So that didn't really happen until practically I hit my 20s. I know that feeling all too well because what, um, when I was what, in primary, what, there was the girls always came to me, not in an egotistical way. It was just that was kind of what happened. What, I think I just thought red hair, exotic. Go up, ask, what, what, ask out kiss away go kind of things that was always my kind of thing at what like, like school discos and things like that so it wasn't until i got to teenage years and i started looking like really really fugly what well, that uh and girls were knocking me back and i'm like how do i talk to these creatures what do i do i i, I don't know and i couldn't exactly ask my dad my dad was like what well, back even back in the day he was like foot what well, footballer or soccer for what American terms what so he was like kind of like the popular guy so girls flocked to him my brother was just a hoormeister which was basically he just went with everything that moved sometimes didn't care if it was moving but, uh, so I didn't really chances have definitely go up exponentially when you have no standards for what you are targeting yeah yeah I, I very much noticed that with some of the quality that he did bring home uh, but aside from that I was like I don't know who to talk to or what to do but in terms of the Santa thing, well, I've been able to get by myself a little bit of leeway around it. My kids still believe, but I don't like telling them about Santa because I don't want them to grow up and think, you lied to me throughout my entire childhood. So I always say the big fat guy because I am the big fat guy. Well, so that way, if they say you lied, I would say, no, it was an adjustment. The big fat guy still I brought the presents. The truth. I told you the truth. Mm -hmm. You just chose to believe the wrong aspect of the truth. Yep. It was a guy who was fat. He still had a beard. That's all I'll say on that one. Ate the cookies. Of course. And drank the milk. Of course. Yes. And then I, and I gave Allison the carrot. So that always worked out pretty well. And one thing uh, for any of the listeners and the viewers that don't know it, when you've had your podcast on, you've had a, a regular special guest that uh, Alison and I are both extremely envious of, and that is one of the musicians from the band Nickelback. Now, <laughs> now I've got to ask, how the hell did you 
managed to grab that. Easy because we went to the same gym. So I go to a celebrity gym. I'm not a celebrity, much to my chagrin. But <laughs> I go to the celebrity gym and I'm a little bit noticeable there because at one point at this gym, I lost 90 pounds. I gained back a whole bunch of weight. I've been fluctuating. They've been selling me, several people at the gym have been selling me on this idea of being like a bigger guy that moves because even at my heaviest recently of around 270, I could do cartwheels and I can do flips and I can do all these things. Mm. It's part of my personality package. Mm. And um, early on at this gym, I met Mike because the owner of the gym will introduce me to everybody. Have you met Mike? Like, you know, Mike, of course, you know, Mike is like, I have no idea who Mike is. He's in a band. Lovely. Aren't we all at some point? No, no. He's in a real band. You might have heard of them. I might have. Do tell. Nickelback, the band that sucks. Yeah. Oh, cool. So when I met Mike, one of the first thing that happened is somehow he saw my Dark Spectre 2 comedy short. Wow. Super villain short. All 9,000 of you go watch it now. Yes, now, definitely. Um, he's into dark humor. He loves British humor. And what I've come to realize is I'm more shaped by British humor than I am by American, American humor. Mm. So there's a lot more nuanced characters in English t shows of all types. So your villain in a English show also may have redeeming qualities, may make some sane, positive choices, but he's still the bad guy. Yeah. We can't do that in America. In America, mm -hmm. that just makes no sense. What What do you mean that the villain loves his mother? Why doesn't he just kill her? It's because, would you kill your mother? It's like, <laughs> why would he? Like, you know, maybe not, maybe he just doesn't like society. Who knows? And a lot of people with Dark Spectre have said to me, well, I don't understand why he loves his mother, why he's taking mm. care of his mother. It's like, shouldn't he have just started off by killing her? Anyway, Mike, same mm. same kind of um, mindset. Right. So he was a fan of my work. And so the second time I met him, we were like out in this like freeway area. Yeah. And I said to him, I was like, I have to ask. I don't know how to put it. And he looked at me, he was like, when did we start sucking? And I was like, yeah, that's the question I want to know. And he relayed the story to me. <laughs> then the other way we've had a connection is something I'm very <laughs> proud of, which is outside of the music, and he's a hell of a bass player, mm. he is a mixed martial artist. He is very much into his physicality. He's a very philosophical person. He's a very smart person. I make an apple cake. It is the best apple cake you've never had because you're on the other side of the Atlantic. I'm on the West Coast to begin with. There's a lot of distance between us. We so, need to get like some, you know, like freeze packaging well, and you can send it to me and then I'll mm -hmm. somehow find the haggis and bring it over and like freeze dry it over to you. Man, that is me <laughs> really coming out on the bottom end of that deal. Yeah. Um, oh, I find other things. I'd get, I'd, I'd put in like a bottle of whiskey or something, like one of the two. Like, you just do like what like international reaction videos where we get our packages and go and be like, okay, I've got the apple pie. Now you just have like the American pie theme in the background. The down, 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 down. You know, like, no, not like that. <laughs> and then you've just got like something like, you know, well, I've just received a haggis. <laughs> I think anyway. I have to try this or give it to the dogs. Um, but anyway, so I make this apple, this apple cake and I took it to the gym and everybody at the gym went nuts. He loved it so much that he began, if he knew that the apple cake was going to be there, which it doesn't go often because it's hard to make, he would avoid going to the gym. There was one time I had brought the apple cake. He walks into the gym, he walks into the office. He looks at the apple cake the apple cake looks at him and he literally turned around and left the gym and went home. It was the best thing in the world. So we have this friendly relationship. And then mm -hmm. it turns out I live in a house in the Hollywood Hills. It, my girlfriend's family lived in this house since 1940. Mm -hmm. It is a lovely house in a neighborhood I can't afford to live in, but I can because 
This house has been in the family forever. He lives a block and a half away. Wow. So we will hit each other on the sidewalks figuratively, me occasionally, mm -hmm. literally, when we're walking our dogs. And he's a massive dog person too. That's the other mm -hmm. thing is, you know, um, my three dogs love him. His dog, Liberty, loves me. A very friendly German Shepherd. So we have this connection. So when it came to doing this podcast, I asked him if he would come on. And he didn't just come on. Um, the first time he came on was on The Fittest Fat Kid, which I mm. actually just re-released on YouTube simply because they just dropped an album last week. So yes, why not? Well, uh, why we, actually, we actually got the album. I got the album for me and my wife. She just turned 40. What uh, last week, uh, well, and I got the album and it was the signed copy. What well, and she was absolutely over the moon, like because Nickelback is our band. What well, uh, Far Away was our uh, first dance at our wedding as well. What well, went and see them when they came to the SCC Hydro, what well, over in Glasgow as well. What well, um, so yeah, you can pass that on to what well, we are massive fans. What well, and yep, yeah, and he made my wife's birthday by getting that autographed uh, CD. So a big thank you to the band for oh, that. I I will, I will actually pass that on. And um, so, yeah, so the first time was for the fittest fat kid where we talked about our, like the fitness thing and his injury and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when I decided to do fails, falls and F ups, I knew that was what I wanted to do because I also knew one, he's not a precious guarded person. He talks in very plain speak, very direct. And has a really big sense of humor. So even though I didn't spring it on him that the very first question is, um, you know, why, why do you suck? suck? <laughs> right. Even even though I want on record that I do, what well, as I've said, I love Nickelback. I have every one of their albums, even like their early stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, well, it's, and there's a lot more fans than detractors, but really the detractions to me, as somebody who was not into them, or not like I wasn't for them or against them. I was indifferent. I heard a couple of their songs. I mm. actually more heard parodies of their songs than their actual songs. So, you know, what it really is in a odd sort of way is he's somebody I'm I, I really like. I really like him. So Nickelback, this 60 million plus selling band, album selling band. Massive sold out shows when they can have them due to health reasons or whatnot. Not their yeah. health, but the entirety of the of the world. Yeah, he's, well, there, he's was, like there was a, a health issue as well. Like his um, Chad Kroger like, had to rest. He uh, had to have a, what was it, an operation on his voice. Like some what some happened to his vocal cords. He like, had to take time out to kind of recover. And I think that was I just before the pandemic kicked off. So that like, is what well, the thing. Not bad timing time, on that then. Yeah, it was what well, it was plenty of time from the rest and recover, and then we well, absolutely blast it with our new album, which is you know again fantastic. Right, and the thing is, like I know Mike, I've mm -hmm. met, like, and I've met his immediate family because they live in my neighborhood. Mm. I've met his, I've met his aunt, in a car as they were taking her to the airport, and we stopped to say hello, because again, it's more neighborly things. So I have this. This is my buddy. So when mm. the new album came out, I bought it and let him know that I bought it simply because <laughs> it's like, because when my other buddy, Scott, who um, was out from the shadow boxers, the guy that I would box with, we've even done that in a little bit. We're going to get back to it. Mm. When he was beginning to release singles, I was buying them. There's uh, the owner of my gym. His son is trying to become a musician and he dropped mm -hmm. an album this year. I bought that. These yeah. are my friends. You buy, if your friends put out something, you support it. And he doesn't need that from me. He does, mm -hmm. that doesn't matter, but it's kind of like, Hey, I bought your album because maybe one day you'll make it. I'm here for you. Mm. And he's like, thank you, you idiot. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but the thing is I'm not connected to the band. I, mm. I've not met Chad. I've not met, Daniel, I've not met Ryan. The only reason I know their names is because I've now talked to him about it enough. Mm -hmm. It's he's my friend. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. And what? And again, like the the buying the album, like you've not bought it because you're jumping on a bandwagon. Like you, what? He's a friend. He makes music. You support him. 
Yeah. Right? And that's that's what friends like should do. Yeah. Right? In general, it doesn't matter if you're like, you know, if you've got like, you know, 60 million album sales or six album sales. It's like like guys that I've had on that are in like the Scottish underground rap scene. Like I'll get them on to promote their work. What and what and I would treat them exactly the same way that I would if a a, like a bigger name came on. It never bothers me. What I don't want it to seem like I'm just asking about Mike. It was just one of the curiosity ones of how and now that I know right. that that's, that's the that's, answer. Just he's Jim yeah. Buddy, and that's how I got mm-hmm. several of my interviews. That's how. Let's see who else did I interview from the gym? Of course. Eric, the trainer of the gym. Mm-hmm. Um, God, I can't even remember who I've interviewed at this point. Mm. Oh, your interviews are really good, like, because, like, you know, I always like to do uh, to do follow ups with people that have been on, like, check out their stuff and watch the episodes, and what well, again show the same support that you've shown me by coming on like my podcast as a guest. Like, and one of the things I really love about it is that it is so deep dive. Like a lot of people, like you know, just want you know the stat like really, really short content because short's just like the way it is now. Like you know, yeah, like humans have less attention span than the goldfish now. What? Uh, what? Yeah, uh, average human attention span is seven seconds. There you go. And he's now forgotten it in that seven seconds. Who are you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So that's why I love like uh, like your content because it's more deep dive. Like you can really get into it. Like it's a few, well, I feel like it's starting to be more of a dying art. The kind of like the in depth conversations. Do you feel that from your side, or what's been your kind of takes in the process since like since we last spoke, basically? Uh, I think there has been a race to the bottom when it comes to when it comes to attention span content any way you want to put it years ago like i don't know about you and even for me i've been affected by the growth of social media i've been affected by how it went from you know there was a a point in in our lives where aside from watching tv dealing with like large book you know reading tons of books all that stuff this was easy to do you were conditioned to that Mm -hmm. but with this race to the bottom taking conversations and putting them to tweet size, then taking that, you know, taking YouTube videos and then making them vines. It's only six seconds from mm. that. We get tick. We don't directly get TikTok, but then, you know, in TikTok, yeah. which is the most popular, we're talking anywhere from 20 seconds to three minutes for most mm. of the content, even though they've increased the time. And that has done a couple of things to, I think it's done them definitely to me. And I think to a lot of the people I know, if not, most people, which is now it's hard to concentrate for that long period of time. So, mm-hmm. and it also has produced the same effects as playing a slot machine because you're yeah. moving from content to content to content. What's next? What's next? What's next? This one sucked, but this one, oh, this one, oh my God, endorphin, endorphin, endorphin. Mm. Uh, oh, uh, oh, and that's what it is. So yeah. I am having difficulty because I don't know how to fit into that, even yeah. though I'm affected by it. Yeah. Do you feel like it's a very interesting analogy, the slot machine analogy? So, do you feel like being a content creator that you are essentially the slot machine, and you just feel like anytime someone's clicking on a video, like they're waiting for that payout, like, but just not getting the satisfaction? Or do you feel like you're the case of I'm waiting to get my own payout, like you're the, or like you're the consu- like you're also like the consumer going buy my content and hit the jackpot so I can hit the jackpot? Hmm. I don't really feel like none of my content fits into the slot machine thing, simply because hmm. as you as you said, I, I mean, I, I've tried to make slot machine style content, but my stuff doesn't work that way. Hmm. So it's hard for me to find because I have these in-depth conversations. Like it's probably going to be hard out of this conversation we're going to have for you to find a 20 second clip. Mm. There's like more nuance to it. There's more discussion to it. Yeah. So in any 20 given seconds, isn't going to be that like, <gasps> that was the yeah. statement. Yeah. You need it's, to listen to the whole thing. Yeah. It's the same. Like I've done like well over like a, like 150 odd interviews now. And I have cl- I've been able to do a short of one interview. What? And that is, but that has been, 
And it was purely because of what I was asking menopausal women why it was called perimenopause because they weren't Nando's chicken. Well, and that so it was just like one wee sound bite where people didn't believe I actually said it, and I went, "Okay, there you go, twenty second clip." That was it. But it's the same kind of deal. What I would prefer that people sit down and like you know, what watch the video or listen to the or listen to the interview and properly hear what they've got to say. Don't get me wrong; like my timings have kind of went down because like you know, Zoom is now my producer. Like is. After a certain amount of time, once the pandemic stopped, Zoom stopped giving you the unlimited time for two people and just went, okay, you're down to 40 minutes now. And I'm like, hmm, how am I going to work this? And I thought, well, Zoom has technically become a free producer. They're basically <laughs> like, because that's what a producer would do in a studio. If you had an interview, they'd be like, right, you've got 10 minutes and we need to wrap this up. So I used that to my advantage at the same time. And then it was the same deal, like, you know, one thing that uh, I will say is, like, if you're not feeling where you fit, well, that is a very good thing because you're so unique. You, what well, your stuff is, like, for me, niche definition. And instead of like shying away from it, embrace it more, well, and find different ways to do it. Like, when the guest interviews for me started drying up over the summer, I was like, what the hell do I do? What, well, um, I've got no content. And then I literally just pulled a rabbit out of my backside and thought, "What? let's talk about mental health issues that I go through and people go through in the industry and people seem to like them. And I was like, all right. So that one episode filler be has now become also a regular series. And the same with, I was like, hmm, I wonder if old guests would want to come back on the podcast a lot and reached out to like John Va, reached out to Talia and now reached out to yourself. What, and it's like, oh, that's turning into a series as well. So you'd be quite, you'll be surprised at the things that will come out of it what, from from your work. Like, like you say, the guests that you've had on have been brilliant. I mean, not not just like, you know, like the guitar, a guitarist from Nickelback, but like um, you interviewed uh, Kurt Turnbull, I remember. Yep. As well. I that was twice. A, yep. What, both really insightful interviews. What, what thoroughly enjoyed them. What, so you've got connections like clearly more in a music industry side as well. You've also got your experience in acting. You've got the experience like, you know, what in the gym and working out, what uh, like um what and things like that. You've got plenty of talents there, you've got plenty of skills, what and what Oh yes. I was I was I very have nothing glad if not full of it. Yeah. I was very glad to see your uh like what when I was doing like my kind of my YouTube scrolling, what uh, when the kids were on the tablets, I saw the Nickelback one popped back up again. Well, and I was like, yes. I haven't seen a video uh, of his pop up for a while. I'm so glad. So we just we just got to get that going again, my friend. We just got, uh, got to get the motivation back for you. Well, and I know it can be there demoralizing. Some, there's, and there are several uh, episodes that I've been thinking about doing. So mm. it's been several months of me trying to Get, again, this gym is a nexus for me, mm -hmm. but there is a former Olympian and I want to talk to him mm. because he's a gymnast and he got the bronze. Oh. The thing is, I hear getting the bronze. I'm like, oh my God, like at, in this four year period, you are one of three people. Mm -hmm. That is not how they see it. That is yeah. not how they see it at all. And also... I don't know about you, but what is the mindset of an Olympian? Because not anybody, mm -hmm. can, not just anybody can do that. Not most people can do that. You yeah. have to have a very, very specific mindset, ability to sacrifice, and you do it at a young age. And how does that shape you? There are so many questions. Mm -hmm. In Definitely. fact, I don't necessarily know yet how I'm going to resume a regular schedule because I'm really trying to get my thing is I will so it's discouraged is a fair way of putting it but really what it is is I tend to do a cost benefit analysis of the amount of work and effort I put into something mm -hmm. so part of what makes my show good is a lot of editing if it was just me like I will babble from time to time I talk a lot sometimes in areas that it's not good because 
you're interviewing me. I'm like, I'm the one who should be speaking. But if I was, if you were on and I was interviewing you, it's more about what you're saying. Hmm. If I'm prefacing that with like a five sentence question, well, I need to lose three of those sentences because I'm talking too much. Hmm. You, like for my sensibilities, hmm. sometimes I like, and also let's face it. I'm a very warm and fuzzy narcissist. I love the sound of my voice. I can talk about me for hours. Do you have time? You'll probably only have 15 minutes left because Zoom is dictating this. Um, yeah. At the moment, seven minutes and 34 seconds. <laughs> and I expect those 34 seconds that I just wasted. Yeah. Um, but I want to talk to him. There's a couple other people at the gym that I would like to talk to, but I think part of my issues are so far my ability to get guests are all based off this gym. Hmm. I need to correct that because I need to expand outward. I think my topic is too broad. I think I need to narrow down a little bit. Hmm. Uh, and I think like I, the name's great, but I don't know that I need to hang on to the concept of it always has to be about people's failures and screw ups and how it's shaped them. Hmm. I think that's a good topic, but I think there's some degree of not broadening, but narrowing it down so that it's mm. more fitting into an SEO algorithm, which mm. I don't think my content isn't good. I think my content is great because again, narcissist. Mm -hmm. But um, what I think is I'm not good at the SEO. It's hard to find someone who's good at the SEO. It's very easy to find ways of getting ripped off trying to work that out. You know, there's a lot, there's lots of people that could help you with that. <clears throat> uh, what well, that could hit that, that could help with that. Like things that you've talked about there are things that like I figured out, but I didn't realize that I had the knowledge of until someone said, why are you not doing a course on this? And I was like, wait, I can do that. And then I did like a kind of a, like a test pilot, you know, for uh, small to medium sized businesses what to what and use that as to see how i could present what knowledge i could use and more importantly if people ask me questions off the fly would i be able to answer them because that's the thing that i shit at the most i'm like i have a script uh oh improvisation here we come i was fine with that on the stage but is that going to work when i'm talking about podcasting and i actually did surprisingly well, I mean, and at that point, it's not like when you're on the stage improvising, it's not sort of like, okay, Andrew, you're a chicken with marital problems, and I am a depressed farmer, and you're trying to comfort me because you want me to raise your station. Go. This is all right. I'm, fair I I'm, al this... I'm already there with the chicken. I'm there. Yeah. I can, well, I'm I'm gonna come up to you and go. Bah, 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 bah. Well, Life is a meaningless void, and you yep. will learn that. Anyway, you just have, um, you just have chicken subtitles. Yes. <laughs> brock, brock, brock. It's almost like one of those old Lucas film games. Um, <laughs> oh man, I've missed but, you. Yeah, I've missed you too. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> anyway, we're back um, to the chickens. We're back to the chickens. It's always about the chickens. You know, it's for dinner. My compatriots. Oh. Uh, the irony was we were talking about an egg earlier. <laughs> we were. Oh, my God. So, um, but when it comes to the improvising of, it's not improvising. It's extemporaneous speaking. These are two different things. You're not pulling things out of your ass to, to just try to, oh, that, that's a, oh, that is an algorithmic outlier that um, is dictated by the specific selection of keywords used in a uh, hidden text format in your main description, as long as you repeat your title 15 times within that description. <laughs> you, you actually know what you're talking about. So you're just going like, oh, that, that's this thing. Mm. Yeah. So, so it's, one, it's one of the things I try and do is like I try and cut through all the the BS, I mean, you'll have seen it like in other kind of courses where they'll drip feed you X amount, but then you're like, so how is that applicable to me? And that's why I started doing like the clients because I had people going like, how do you do it? And I'm like, well, the way that I do it for me wouldn't work for you. So let's talk about your thing 
and see what we can do. Well, I mean, obviously I'll put out the generic content if it means that I can get the analytics and get the money up. That's just the way it needs to go. But, but I prefer the one-on-ones with people. What I prefer like finding out what their idea is and going, right, let's explore this what, through what, through my workshops. What, and then we get into a deep dive. We go through it. What, and I use like um, uh, one of the guys, Chris Shopland, who's extemporary art. He's went from 193 subscribers to 269 since we started and we've done one session. And I'm like, wow, I know what I'm talking about. How the hell did that happen? <laughs> anyway, that wasn't meant to be like, you know, a pitch. I'm just saying that, you know, if you ever want. So if you're out there and you have a <laughs> podcast, if you have a YouTube channel, if yeah. you've got a Vine, why are you still on Vine? It doesn't exist. But if you have any of these contract, <laughs> contact, okay. contract, both of them, either or. Either way. Andrew Darden, <laughs> the mental ginger, the mental marketer who <laughs> will bring you forth out of the dark ages of YouTube into the grand l- green landscape of monetization <laughs> at $4 per thousand clicks. Anyway. <laughs> oh man. Well, I see it wasn't meant to be like, you know, the plug. It's just the fact that, you know, you, like, you're a friend. Like, I'm, not, like, I'm genuine when I say it. I Why want not? to help people. You know, I want to help people. And if it means that my like, podcast are sure going, nah, I think I'm going to give up. Don't give up then that's worth it for me. So, so Bruce, where can my audience find you if they're looking for you on the socials to keep your dream alive? Sell it, my friend. I'm Sell. right here. I've been right here the entire time. I am exactly here. And where is here? That is a good question. Thank you, unknown person, for asking. They're in your home, away from all of this. So the important thing, the thing that means the most to me, the thing that will be most entertaining for you is to go to my YouTube channel, which is under my name, Bruce Naxon. And there the you can watch all of my interviews, but you can also watch my short films, my like years ago, 10 episode web series, which is my first thing I ever produced. But look for Dark Spectre, look for Lunchtime is Over, look for nothing personal. Comment, like, subscribe. I am just under 300 subscribers. I need to get to a thousand in the next five months before I think things start falling off. So limited amount of time, I need your help. Now my podcast, the first one is The Fittest Fat Kid You Know. It's been a while since I've produced one of those, but the information is still good. The interviews are still good. So please listen. If you're not watching it, listen to it. The other one, which is Fails, Falls, and F-Ups. And that's the one that I've been on a hiatus with for a little bit. And the one I am thinking of picking up a couple more episodes at the very least. And that's at Fails, Falls, and F-Ups, you can find them at Apple, Spotify, whatever the other aggregators are. And there's a lot of aggregators, but chances are where you're podcasting, I'm podcasting too. In the socials, you can find me at Bruce Naxon, at TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, but I don't really use Twitter. And that was even before the entire atom bomb that has been the Elon Musk takeover and subsequent Mm -hmm seeming torpedoing of the platform. So it's not very likely that I'm going to go, hey, you know what? Twitter's speaking to me because it most certainly is not. There might be a Tumblr, but I'm not sure if there is. I better find out because that's probably been there for like eight years and I've forgotten about it. (laughs) And of course, if you've got a Friendster, if you've got a MySpace, uh, get with the times. (laughs) I miss MySpace, especially with the way that everything's happened with social media lately. It was like, he gave us a platform where we could put music on it. We don't forget that. He did. The, and the, the thing of it was, and it's kind of a grand irony, what drove most people off of MySpace is MySpace was fun, MySpace was good, and Facebook was like this kind of small thing. But then they began doing the advertiser thing. And they did it in the most in-your-face, garish, um, usability-reducing way possible, that the fact that Facebook had none of that. And it was just, Mm -hmm. you're going to connect up to your friends. You need to know these people for you to connect up to it. So everybody migrated, and then Facebook became what it became. Mm -hmm. And poor MySpace, which I actually think is still there in a weird way. 
Mm. But I think I think it should make a comeback. I mean, can you remember the time when you were worried about who you put in your top like twelve spaces? The top and six. It, yeah. What? Well, you, you could do it in tier. You could like select six. You could select eight. You could select twelve. What? The twelve was the max. What? But imagine that what? now. What in Facebook with one thousand like six hundred like friends and you're trying to like narrow it down to like four that pop up every time you like see your profile you'd be having a heart attack just thinking about it i you'd have these moments where if you were dating a girl and you and it wasn't like quite firm mm. and then like another guy comes up into her top six and it'd be like oh what's this and of course if you did the same thing with another girl like that was how lots of relationships got exposed blown up and all of that stuff it was that that top six like really, really had, there was a lot of politics going into that top six, top 12. Yeah, definitely. Well, and then you'd get someone who would go, I've known you since you were five years old and like, and well, I'm the one you're uh, at least top six. Like I'm down at 12. Why am I at 12? And this guy that you've, you've known for three years is like number four. And I'm, or like someone, I've known you since you were a kid. Why am I though there? And I'm like, your family, you shouldn't be there. <laughs> yes. What? And it was just all you those shouldn't. type of things, just constant. <laughs> what? Did shouldn't you ever be on have my Be-? profile at all. Did you ever have Bebo when it was out? No, I didn't Bebo. Uh, I had Bebo. I was so glad that got destroyed because there were so many like pictures of me. Like I dyed my hair like a deep red and it was slicked down emo fringe style. I was so glad when Bebo got wiped out. It, it made a slight. Uh, come back and I was like please 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 don't have those photos there well, luckily it died very quickly as well and I'm like yes emo me is still gone <laughs> <laughs> there are a couple pictures floating out there with me with this luxurious curly long hair from my metal days yeah oh man well, I would I would be so worried if someone looks at this and just goes right let's see if we can find some pictures from that point well, and just really destroy Andrew and I'm like yeah <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that would. Yeah, well, I've I've made a market on ginger. Let's not expose the fact that I dyed it. I got away with it when I was fourteen when I dyed it blonde, and luckily the ginger had grown back in by the time school picture day came. So luckily, no one ever saw the uh, that mess aside from the ones who lived it. But I'm like, no, I don't want to see any other ones. Not a chance. <laughs> this never happened at all. Nope, I repress a lot of my childhood for legal reasons. <laughs> <laughs> me too they'll never catch yeah. me they'll never find the bodies anyway yeah. at least not well that's why you have the house that's been there for generations oh yes yeah definitely been here for generations and yep. i will never have an opportunity to live in a place like this again so i cherish it <laughs> yeah. i love it when the fireworks yeah. go off in the hollywood bowl they are in my backyard it's never wow. caught fire but it's like eye line in my backyard and that's and that's the other thing, you know, when you talk, like, let's take a moment to appreciate small, like small things in life. Cause this is not mm-hmm. a small thing. So when the pet shop boys and new order did a tour, they played mm-hmm. the Hollywood bowl for two nights. I was able to go sit out on my back porch and listen to bo- the concert both nights. Wow. I mean, that is brilliant. Yeah. So that's fantastic. I need to get something happening successfully because I want to stay here. And we have a limited amount of time to figure out whether we can do it successfully or not. Well, there we go. We just got to get all those subscribers to come over and they can start by getting your original video up to 8,400 views. We're six away. We will do it. I can guarantee it. Six away. I ha- Hopefully I by ha- the time this episode is over, be too closer. Mm. By the time this episode, we'll, we'll probably cross it because it's the advantage of having like five accounts. Yeah. I was like, right, this one tonight, this one tomorrow, this one the next day. <laughs> I don't do that over all my things. I just want to clarify that right now. That's just it's like I've all of my views are not me on eight different computers in four different locations. Yep, especially because the uh, the lucky bill is just extortionate now. There's no way it could happen. <laughs> That's what I was saying like, um to what well, uh, at the time of this recording, I got my very first payment from Google. What well, through my from my YouTube stuff, so I was like, "Yeah, got it. Take that, society. I did something <laughs> I loved, and I got paid for it. Screw you." 
Mm. It took me three yeah. channels. Wow, and like been about eight months because the first we got monetized in February, but I got there. <laughs> I did it. Have you been getting advertisers? Nope. All off my own back. Well, I had a couple of sponsors. Well, uh, well, and but that's been about it. No one that no one else has contacted. And I'm not fussed because you know, because in a way it benefits me more for when I'm plugging like other things. I can go, look, I got this off my own back. Imagine what you could I could do if you backed me. What well, the whole one man band story, what well, it seems to be what like, the thing that drives people when they're like, You did this like all on your own, and I'm like, um, well, you guys didn't help, so screw you. <laughs> <laughs> well, so and that's the way it's all the way it kind of went with with me like, and it's now the stage where well i'm looking also at you know produce like original like content like series like series and stuff like that and there was like so what's the plans next and i'm like i'm already at where i was planning for my five-year plan my five-year plan was to you know have my own media company it happened within a year because it was like three of them were taken off i need a company to keep them under i'm not running three fucking companies so that was just how that kind of came about. And then it was like, oh, why don't you take on some clients? And I'm like, who the hell would want to work with me? And then I got another three and I'm like, then another five. And I'm like, okay, people want to work with me. Okay. So like I said, like, I know I've been very well, fortunate and I'm very grateful. Well, but I also know that I have worked my ass off well, to do it. Like 12 to 14 hour days and like juggling up well, as well, a wife and two kids and still trying to have some semblance of a life. It's just what well, I've just been really, what well, really happy and really grateful. Yes, there's some shit times that I'm going through right now. Sadly, what well, are you believing it? My girlfriend, who is taking a lunch break from work. Ah, uh, hello, Bruce's girlfriend. Yeah. The guy I'm interviewed says hello, Bruce's girlfriend. Hi. She said hi. Yay. She's like, not going to you... approach near camera. Don't don't even think about asking. <laughs> nope. She is not an on camera person. I, I mean, the she's voice. the face for it, but she does not have the. Uh, Desire, yeah. anyway, shape or form. I heard the voice. I heard the laugh. So that's that's all good for me. Well, it's the same with Al, uh, my wife as well. Like she's, what, what she's got like got the the face for going on camera. And anytime I'm like, you want to go on camera? She's like, can you just get to? <sighs> so I totally understand it. But yeah, it's been. And she's I'm okay. totally supportive, but yeah, but uh, I think it's uh, like an advantage when my wife doesn't really support anything I do. Because it's like another, it's like, it's like, I'm like, okay, I can just go and do my thing. Hey, I use that joke in my stand up because I've, well, I've been doing stand up comedy lately as well. It's like the Godfather three. It's like, I try and get out and they keep pulling me back in. Well, so one of the, one of the jokes that I do use is that I love my wife and she loves me so much that she stays away from everything I do. Mm-hmm. Well, and a lot of people laugh at that. And I'm like, uh, you all experience that similar pain. <laughs> Yeah, Bruce, what, it's it's just been absolutely great to to see you and get to talk to you what, and what your as we call it in Scotland like what banter what your banter is like second to none what I really enjoy talking to you I really enjoy like you know seeing your work and hearing what you've got to say what I know you're really I like to think our... that I'm a decent bantee I think I like I think as a bantee I do yes I do I I hold up my end and I, I'm proud of that. Yes. And it was good to see you. Like, I have been paying attention and you've like 18 different shows over the course (laughs) of, you know, some of them, it's sort of like, why is his face on an engine? Um, (laughs) (laughs) Yep. And and I felt bad that one time when like I'd gotten COVID and I was like sick and it was sort of like, hey, after taking the only trip I took in like three years where it was sort of like, hey, we're doing this thing. Can you can you argue on behalf of Mumra? <laughs> yeah. Well, like, no, in fairness, we did get someone in who very successfully argued for Mumra. Well, uh, Mark McFarlane again. Thank you so much for stepping in. Like he, what well, and he won. So he definitely might well, gave Mumra his place. Well, so and again, you're always welcome back. Like, in it, well, on any other shows, like um, we will be starting super fights again on Super Ginger in the new year. Well, we'll just be getting what we're going to do it like proper contest style. Well, so I actually have somebody in the Nards, uh, virtually, yeah. Oh, good, good, good. 
You could do that. Oh, virtually. schedule me in for that. I, I definitely want to defend somebody though. Mm. Uh, damn, well, I already missed Mumra. Yeah. Well, was it Mumra we... versus Skeletor? Uh, I guess it was. Oh, no, then wait, I think the wrong person won. Wait, wait, I think. No, no, you're okay for Skeletor. Actually, I think I think you're all right for Skeletor. I'm just gonna double check. Well, because it's been a while since we've done super fights. Well, it's just one of the ones I'll need to just make sure that we are a okay with that. Well, and just going through. Cause that way we know that the if Skeletor hasn't been argued for, we'll know. Okay, we've got a match here. So we'll have a wheel. Yeah, Skeletor a hasn't been argued for. Then I definitely would. I I claim Skeletor now. Oh, yep. Yeah, you can claim Skeletor. It was Mumra versus Shredder. Hmm. What? So yeah, Mumra, what? Mumra was the right choice in that one. I have, I have to agree. What? Uh, I was the one that had to judge it. What? And yeah, what? Basically, like you know, Mumra just tore Shredder a new a hole. What? So yeah, you can you can be on what if and fight for Skeletor. Good, good, but, good. Yeah, but that super fights was just crazy because like I literally won one round and I got to the final. Of the of the whole thing, and I'm like, how was that possible? And we just laugh at that. We're like, we don't know, but it happened. How many? Was, how how did how's the person who's organizing it get to the end with only yeah. one round? It's yeah, crazy. Exactly. It I, was, I assume there was bribery in the background. I assume you paid yourself <laughs> off. No, not at all. I maybe ate a Fredo bar. That was about it. <laughs> well, it worked out well because the other finalist was Ginger, so it was a battle of the Gingers. Well, battle of the Gingers. But of course, I got absolutely. And the yeah. people you were defending. Were they ginger as well? Uh, no, I was defending Doctor Doom, and uh, Christopher John Stephen, who won, was uh, Doctor Manhattan. Yeah, well, Doctor he... Manhattan's a little super over overpowered yeah. for Doctor, even for Doctor yeah. Doom. They turned he turned up with a PowerPoint presentation. Oh jeez! Well, and I was like, I love you, but this is going to be an absolute catch you next Tuesday to edit. But because I was wanting to make sure I had all the slides in, so I was having to convert those slides into images and then uploading them, and I was like, "I'm going to kill you, legitimately going to kill you." <laughs> but it was a people worthy one. People don't winner. realize, yeah, people don't realize how just a small little thing like that creates a whole bunch of problems. Oh, I recently my. did something. F I had a friend who, uh, through, who was doing this anti-bullying campaign. His name's um, Tim Flynn. He has this company called Kato Karate. He's taking his karate classes online, but he does it differently. It's not just about punching and kicking. He's trying to teach young kids, you know, responsibility, respect, discipline, mm. like cognitive abilities. It's a really worthwhile thing. Yeah. And so they, he came out here and they had like this anti-bullying thing. And then he wanted me and I filmed it for him. Mm. But he wanted to make like, like a one minute video to kind of like, like kind of like a sizzle thing. And then he wanted his logo in it. And I said, okay, cool. Send me like a, a send me like something like with layers, like a, a, an, an illustrator file, a, a, a Photoshop file. And they sent me a JPEG. And I was like, I can't use this. It's mm. like, I need, I was like, first off, if it's going to be anything, like it needs to be a PNG. So there's, the transparency, like all this technical stuff. So I had to get him, it took like three go rounds to get the file that I could use to then sort of animate his logo so mm. that it, and also that it like, it was um, fortunately an illustrator file. So it was vector. So it didn't, it wasn't trying to deal with a picture. It could scale and mm. then I could make it look nice. <laughs> but it was like this thing that is on screen for six seconds took me the better part of four hours between the back and forth and all of the different things mm -hmm. and moving it around. And that's part of, you know, some of the frustration when doing anything like this, it takes, it's not the 40, 50 minutes we're talking. It's several hours past that sometimes mm -hmm. many hours past that to make it into the complete package. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it was one of the reasons why I've, also majorly ditched a lot of editing as my process went on because I thought life is short yes. I do not want to spend it editing and it's like if there's something special that I'm working on I will take more time if it's something that's a little bit more challenging but 
uh, if I don't need to, I will not. Like, because I want to get the content out. Like, and you'll know yourself after a while you get into, not like a routine, but you know your style. You know mm. like, what bits that you'd be like, oh, maybe I should cut that. Whereas other bits you'd be like, no, well, I've, I've got the confidence now. I've got the bit of the backbone that I know I can do it. Well, and I can work it well. Like if I'm doing anything like on a voice recorder, just like voice and image stuff, I'll be more pernickety because the timings will always feel a little bit longer because you don't have that visual moving image. What? Well, yeah. But with video, and you've got like me just being crazy animated guy. What well, if I could, if I didn't speak, it was just going like that. Well, that's okay because like, it's visual. But if you just heard, if that was just audio, I'd have to cut that bit out. Yep. So when I always... do my stuff, yeah, mm -hmm. my with my editing, there's a lot. The visual version is always several minutes longer than the audio version, and mm -hmm. it takes me longer to edit the audio version because first I do the editing in video. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's like you said, if you're like if I'm responding to a question, I'm sort of like, well, it's funny you should ask that. Mm -hmm. <sighs> like that. That's something to watch. People are like, oh, it's like, it's this, this deep question. And it turns out the answer was yellow. But mm. in the audio version, that's just 25 seconds of dead silence with the occasional. Mm. And yeah. Yep. Dead air, as they call it in radio. Takes well, much just... longer to get rid of that. You'd figure it'd be just like, you know what it is. It's just going to be like silent, silent, silence. Mm. There we go. But nope. Yep. Well, it's, well it takes a lot longer the, than that. And welcome to the inside sausage making portion of the program <laughs> where we talk ad nauseum, and I do mean nauseum, about just podcasting and editing and picture editing and graphic design and yep. occasionally antacids. I think you just give up the idea for your next podcast. <laughs> a podcast talking about podcasts. You could be the Deadpool metaverse of podcasting. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Why does your podcast suck with Bruce? <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine that one. You get what, uh, Mike from Nickelback to interview you. Like, why does your podcast suck? <laughs> well, just have a total turnaround. <laughs> and you're like, but be short. Why does your podcast suck? It doesn't suck. Okay. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Why does your podcast suck? Because I'm terrible. Because I'm doing it for the wrong reasons. I want all <laughs> eyes on me. And I chose an audio medium. There are no eyes. I didn't think it through. Oh, man. Best part. Well, and the best part is, like, when I do my consultations, I ask them, like, you know, what's your kind of golden goal for doing it? Well, and you get someone that do the whole, like, you know, the spiel of, I want to help people and I want to do this and that. And I'm like... You're talking BS, right? What what's your actual goal? And they're like, I just want I just want a way to make extra money. And I'm like, well, that's fine. As long as you're honest with it, yeah. that'll come through. If you're trying to fake it, that's why people will turn off because they'll know it's a lie. I mean, that's... look, I will do this for your audience right now. I will tell you exactly why I got into podcasting. There we go. All of the stuff I was trying to do died with the pandemic. My Dark Spectre attempting to pitch a series. The 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 not motivation the um you know when you lose a word and it's just not mm -hmm. there and you wonder like oh god is my brain becoming Swiss cheese yeah we call, but call the that momentum brain farting. yes mm. I just brain farted on momentum the momentum I had built over the, those several years the awards I'd won at film festivals and all of this mm. stuff it just all died into the pandemic and then I got sick and then. I even after the pandemic had cooled a little bit and life returned, I was out for another year. Yeah. Will you stop making noise, chair? And um when it was like I need to do something, it was like, what could I do? What could I start just to get something moving, just to get my feet back on it? Podcasting. I had the equipment, I had the basic knowledge of how to do it. I could start there and I was going on this fitness journey. I could use it as a methodology of accountability and ideally build up a following and be able to leverage that 
to reinvigorate the acting, producing, writing career I want to have. Mm -hmm. That's why I got involved. And that's the honest answer. And I do want it to pay money, but I more want the listeners and the ears and the eyeballs so that I could then get representation because representation doesn't tend to understand much mm. in a lot of cases, but they do yeah. understand. I have X amount of people who listen to me. I put like hours, this amount of hours each week. I have people's eyes and ears. Mm -hmm. You want to pitch that you, you want to pitch me into these shows. You mm -hmm. want to do that because this is what I come with. And that mm. was my goal. Yeah. Having said that, I'll take the money too. Mm. And it's always good to have the, well, again, to be honest, like my main goal was to help people, well, but at the same time, I wanted to do something I was good at to try and well, get a better life for my family. Mm -hmm. Granted, a couple of things haven't worked out in that sense since then, well, but well, it's a much better fall than it is now. But one thing I have noticed over in the UK compared to over in the America, what well, um, America really embraces podcasts, what well, they really embrace it, they get behind it, they back it, they have all these things. Britain, Scotland, do not. They do not back it in the slightest. I was actually on a meeting with a, a quite a a quite big like kind of Scottish media company, what who legitimately said to me, uh, "We don't believe online media is a viable option." And now I was a, I was a guest for someone else's meeting, what, and I'd already and already said I run an online media company. Well, I bit my lips so hard not to uh, talk back that I made it bleed. Ooh. Well, we had a debrief afterwards, well, and it was the first time I used the c word around my employers at the time. Well, because I was so angry, because I was like, I got the opportunities I got because of online, and I have followings in places you can't even pronounce. What compared to this, and I was just, but at the end, I was so glad of that meeting because it gave me more fire to keep and really made me realize I know what I want to do now. I now have my next five year plan from that meeting because it's purely, I know it's purely selfish reasons to say, screw you guys. Well, I, well, I will make this will work and you will be like begging me well, after, well, in five years. And it was to, and again, I'm being upfront. It's totally selfish. I want to show those people you're stuck in the past. Screw you. I will be able to, I will bring the future. Totally well, selfish reasons, are, but yeah. Yeah. But he, and even though you're based in Scotland and the, the media media that's directly in front of you is English, Scottish, you know, the British Isles mm. media, you are an online entity. You mm -hmm. like the mental ginger show is not a Scottish show just like the fittest fat kid and um, fails, falls and F ups is not an American show. It's mm -hmm. a show on the internet. Yeah. You can, you can have those meetings with people in other places. Mm -hmm. You can have opportunities and you can pursue plans and other ideas. Yeah. With places, people anywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the you things that I like to, pitch whenever people say to me like oh what uh, about your podcast blah blah do you what well, do you ever go into your analytics and look at um you know the like the countries that it's reached uh sometimes like um what? but i like to so go in know. there because i always like to see how far down the uk is compared to the ones that are at the top so the ones that are usually uh, at the top are canada russia the usa vietnam what uh, in India? What UK is usually usually fifth or sixth. So I always like to say, yeah, these tough these markets that you think that Brits can't crack, a wee ginger guy from Scotland has cracked them. <laughs> what and and where are you? Right, just right down there, right at the bottom. Hmm. Let's see. <laughs> so my like United States, mm. Canada. I'm looking right. at my um my Nickelback episode. There you go. Number one, United States. Two, Canada. Right. Three, Nepal. Oh. Four, United Kingdom. Five, Mexico. Mm. Six, 
And this is for the last, um, is this since lifetime? You can do since lifetime as well. You can filter it there. No, I'm just looking because it's interesting that the views and the numbers don't add up to the views. Mm. It can be quite uh, intriguing sometimes. Because well, you can have it by, you know, episode, but you can also have it by like your whole channel in general. No, That's like it. is this since published? I wonder is if it... also um I wonder if part of it is that there's a bunch that are just unknown. Mm. There can be like quite a few that are usually unknown. It's like it's like I'm going into like, for example, I'm going into your your episode analytics just now to see if it actually matches up because I'm quite intrigued by it to see what they ought to see where the countries were. So like, so since published, so what, so yours were uh, the USA, Canada, Nepal, UK. Yep. Right. That was my, so, that was for, a uh, for his yeah. episode. Yeah. Actually. So, so your episodes on my channel, uh, Number one was Vietnam, 76.9%. Uh, then India, 8%. Brazil, 1%. Kazakhstan, 0.7%. Indonesia, 0.6%. So none of the countries that watch your stuff actually watch the episode. What, what, well, majority of it really like since published on, on my side. So you've got a lot more international... What then you realize we have to we have to get someone that's from Vietnam on your podcast to reignite you. I think that's think that's the goal now. We get Vietnamese. And I'm looking at my Danny, my Danny episode. Hmm. And my Danny Bowman, who was on uh, Life on the, Love on the Spectrum. Hmm. That's there's only two locations, so apparently her all of her traffic came from two places, United States and Canada. Oh. That's quite in, that is quite interesting. Doesn't that doesn't? Yeah, there we go. Like, and it's been and it's just one of those things that like and kind of if I just look at my general like statistics like for my chat like that metal gender shows channel, the way it looks is uh, Russia, India, Vietnam, US, UK. So what you cover? All, we cover a lot of spectrums between us. What and that's. Yeah. And that's something that a lot of traditional media don't understand. They just think we're in our own little bubble and it's fine. And I'm like, okay, we're worldwide. There yeah. you go. Well, this is actually, and ironically, this has turned out to be like, you know, a feature length special. Uh -huh. having, what, yeah. what, having you on having you on this long, but it's always worth it just to get to catch up with you. And what, and one thing that I will say, what to get, we've already promoted the socials and stuff for you as well. But one thing I'll say is don't give up in the podcasting. That's all. You're, you're too good at it and I, and I mean that like like you're you're really strong with your editing what like you've got great knowledge of it what like offer services to do editing to get a bit of, to get a bit of money that's an option for you but keep doing actually the... what I'm like what I'm gonna do for money is uh I have a filmmaker friend and um I want to make serious money so what we're going to do like Editing for podcasts, there's money in it, but there's not a lot of money in it. We're going mm -hmm. to start doing a video service towards corporate clients in the area because Good. then we can charge real money for those services. And mm. through that, I'll be able to have the bedrock so that it's not such a like, I need something to work because that mm. is that's removing... The one thing about all of the stuff we're doing, it's still a performance-based thing. It still yeah. comes down to trying to entertain somebody. So mm -hmm. I want to, even though I'm, I could do podcast editing, I don't think it would pay enough to really be worth my time. Where if I'm going to spend time editing podcasts, they should be mine. Mm -hmm. So I think the next step for me to try to make money, and because I don't want to go back into computers, mm -hmm. is sell my production experience to people who do like these corporate aspirational videos, explainer videos, industrials, mm -hmm. because they pay money. They'll yeah. pay lots of money to do that. 
and it's not a creative thing. Mm -hmm. So while I could do it through podcasting, that would just, I think being a podcast editor would kill any desire for me to actually like edit my own. I would just, after Mm -hmm. all of this editing, I don't want to then sit down and edit, 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 edit versus if I'm doing Mm -hmm. an, an industrial thing. So as far as making money, that's, that's the angle. Mm. Good. Well, but don't give up doing the podcast anyway, man. Like you're too good at it. Like, and the things take it takes time. Like sometimes you know, like you strike it lucky and you have no clue how, but what like, you're good at it, what like, you've got good contacts, new opportunities will come. What like, and I've got every faith that you're gonna you're gonna be a success. What like, well, I wouldn't ask you oh, that on if I didn't think so. So like, so I'm like, and I'm really, really proud of me proud of you so keep going you're, you're tearing up you're, you're, you're making me tear up yep Andrew. it's, the, it's, the, it's the, the frog in my throat i'm not crying you're crying i didn't do this to you you did this to me exactly uh, bruce it's been a, an absolute pleasure having you on thank you so much for for thank coming you back. man it's great to talk to you it's always great to connect to you yeah definitely well and until and again time, skeletor is mine Skeletor is yours. Super fights 2023. You heard it here first. So until next time, my faithful followers, I've been Andrew Durham. This has been the brilliant Bruce Nax, and all the links will be in the description below. Please give him the likes, give him the subs. Let's get his original video to 8,400 views. Well, or even higher. Who knows? I want to try and make this the first one to get to 10,000. I have optimism. Until next time, take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.